Hey guys, I'm here to talk about Octane 2020 version 11.11. .11. Let's see what's new. So two of the things that I was most looking forward to in the new Octane was improvement to the environment map and also normal map, support for normal map. Now, when I say support for normal map, I'm not saying normal map in Octane. I'm talking about support for normal maps in the physical material. And this is a big game changer because before we had the albedo, we had metalness, we had roughness, and but normal map didn't quite work. So though you can build your scene out with the native uh, physical material, normal map just didn't work. And because it didn't work, we couldn't really use physical material in Octane. But now it supports it, which is great. So if you build your texture set in other programs like Substance Painter, 3D Coat, or you know Quixel Mixer, and you export it out, you can pretty much drop it in to the physical material, set it all up, and they'll still work with Octane just fine. And I was really looking forward to that. So although that version actually was uh, supported in 11.10, uh, we're gonna review it in 11.11, .11, and let's see, let's see how it works. So I got 3ds Max started up here, and the first thing I wanna do is now test the environment texture and see how it has improved. What I'm gonna do is uh, load a teapot and put it right in the middle. And we're just using that as reference just to see if the environment is actually casting light on top of it. And we'll probably see some, a little bit of Fresnel and we'll probably uh, see a little bit of color bleed on it. And that's just there to give us a point of reference. And um, I'm gonna switch over to Octane and load in a universal material and just put in a grayscale value for that and we're gonna load that right onto top of the, uh, the teapot. And I just started the Octane viewport. I'm gonna resize it and put it into the corner so that it's just a little bit easier to see side by side. Octane does not yet support um, having the uh, the renderer work in the viewport so we're gonna have to put it off to the side for now i'm going to load a bitmap right now and just uh, load it into the viewport so i can see how it has improved uh, or i should say how it works in the old version right now i am using an older version a previous version which is 11.09 and we're going to test out how it operates in the previous version first before we start loading up the new version and making comparison. So after loading up the HDRI, you can tell that the in the Octane viewport, it looks a little bit darker. And in the 3ds Max viewport, it looks fine. The other thing you have to uh, pay attention to is that uh, in the background, it's actually backwards not backwards yeah I guess it's backwards uh, so you can see it's backwards from that number sign you see how it says 2043 in octane but in the max report is the number looks like it's uh, mirrored in some strange way either way it's uh, not quite working the colors off and the directions off and uh, it's not representing things correctly. Now I want to try using a different uh, tool, which is the environment map. And we're going to load that up and see um, how that works. Okay, so after loading that in, we still have the um, we still have the color issue, which is uh, brighter in the viewport and darker in Octane viewport. 
um, and you can see that in um, Octane, the direction looks um, a little bit odd. It's uh, it's in the wrong orientation. You can see it's like a 90 degrees some for whatever reason. Um, it's just not working. Everything is a little funky, and um, that's not gonna help us uh, work correctly. Now we're in the new version of Octane plugin, which is 11.11. Um, .11. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to load up a teapot, drop into the viewport, opening up the material editor so that we can load in a bitmap to drop into the environment. Just a second, I gotta go to my HDRI folder and load a bitmap. Okay, now let's see how the environment is displayed in Octane Viewport. Okay, so the environment, um, HDR environment doesn't seem to work that well. So we're just gonna try now a bitmap and do the same thing. Load in the environment. I could have just copy and paste that, but I did not. Let's plug that in. Okay, environment. Oh, look at that. Look at that. The background matches. The color space seems to be pretty good. And the background object is not reverse or doing some type of 90, 90 degree rotation. So uh, it looks pretty good. Now this is helpful. And uh, it's much closer to the representation to what we're going to be getting. So. This is good. So in that sense, in version 11.10 or 11.11, .11, uh, the background has been fixed and uh, we can work properly now with HDRI. Here I'm gonna go back and load a uh, motorcycle scene that I have previously created in 3ds Max. So uh, as this loads up, um, what we're gonna do is um, test out normal maps. Now this is back in version 11.09 of Octane. And you can tell that right now the shadow catcher in the physical material or the, na the native shadow catcher in 3ds Max does not work in Octane yet. But uh, we're gonna zoom in close to this uh, panel here and you can see there's like these grooves and on the uh, red panel, there's also these grooves and then there's like this, uh, these other panel lines that are just simply missing in uh, Octane. And that's because, well, it just didn't support normal map. Okay, now we're back in Octane 11.11. .11, and now we're gonna do the same thing, load up my motorcycle scene. Look at the areas to have the normal maps, which is that uh, panel, that metal panel right there, and the red panels. I'm just gonna delete the floor because it's distracting and update the viewport in Octane. Okay, great. Uh, let's zoom in close and see if the normal map's working. Oh, uh, that's good. So now the normal maps is working and uh, we can see it in the viewport. We can get in closer and we're noticing that it looks like the channel, the G channel, most likely the green channel, is flipped in the wrong direction. 
So we're going to flip it back. Okay, I've dropped that in and we're going to go to the normal map node and we're going to flip the G. Okay, we see it working in the viewport, but it looks like it's not quite working in Octane viewport just yet, the normal channel. Yeah, let me try that again. Let's get a little bit closer. Let's see here. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's not quite working just yet. And that would be something I will report to the Octane developers. Let them be aware of that and have them correct it. What I suspect is that uh, how they implemented is that in Octane, uh, we're using an Octane Universal material, you just plug the normal Mac directly into the normal channels, and that's probably what it's doing. So um, Octane does not support all the other physical material nodes. It's really just kind of the, uh, the, uh, the main principal shader, which is physical material, but there's no other nodes, so you can't grab like you know, all the OSL nodes from 3ds Max and try to plug that into physical material, expect Octane to know how to read that. So it's really just the implementation of their primary physical material that's working and all the other nodes does not. Now, if we need to use that, then we'll have to still go into Octane Universal Material and use all the Octane sets of nodes that works with that. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. But however, if you build your materials in other programs, again, like such as Substance Painter, 3D Coat, Quixel Mixer, and you're only gonna use the, those texture sets, then you should technically be able to build a full scene just doing that, and it should work fine in Octane. Now, if you wanna really do that and not have that flexibility, uh, probably not. What's nice is that you can now just open um, 3ds max load in a object and drop in a simple texture set and it'll render fine in octane without having to do anything else that's really convenient hope you like this video and tune in next time and please subscribe thank you